What's going on, Avalanche fans? Welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Chris Maselli, with another episode of the podcast dedicated to your Colorado Avalanche. And for today, we will be talking, continuing to talk about injuries for the Colorado Avalanche, namely one guy in particular. Uh, and we will be discussing Kale McCarr. And is he deserving of something more than just the Defensive Player of the Year award? We will talk about that, and we will get into our three stars of last week, not name Nathan, which is something that we do every week. It'd be way too easy to put Nathan McKinnon as the top player of the week each and every week, so we kind of diversify that and give it to guys who maybe don't usually see the three stars on your average three-star list. So that's what we will do. First things first, follow the show on social media outlets on Twitter, L-O-P-N underscore Avalanche on Instagram. Search for Locked on Avalanche and send any questions, comments, or concerns to Locked on Avalanche at gmail.com. So today I'm wearing my, uh, if, you, if you're watching on the News 9 feed, uh, I'm wearing my reverse retro Nathan McKinnon jersey because I don't know if this would be like good juju or something and uh, maybe he'll come back a little bit quicker but maybe it's working because there's some word coming out I didn't think we would get here anything at all because the avalanche were off yesterday and typically when you have an off day you don't get a lot of news uh, and that really I mean, I say it wasn't the case. It wasn't the case because we got a little bit of something. And from some of the uh, people in the know with the avalanche and kind of like the insiders, I heard and read multiple reports that he might not be out for that long. Um, I don't know what that is, but it doesn't seem like it, it could be weeks it could be days uh we maybe we'll get a little bit more of a solid time frame on that maybe today because you know there's a game and they'll have morning skate and players and coaches are, are more readily available on days like that so maybe we'll get something Remains to be seen if we'll get anything because of someone of his stature. They don't want to lead on too much if something is really wrong with him. But uh, word coming from some people, you know, some avalanche insiders is he might not be out a long period of time. So I think with that, a, a lot of avalanche fans are breathing a, a sigh of relief. And it's just so weird. I, I think the thing that I want more than anything is just clarification on what the heck it was. Because, again, I've gone through the video and I'm scouring, trying to find something. And it must have happened. The, the feed, you know, the, the feed that I have is the feed that they're showing on television. It had to be something that happened off of off camera. When the camera panned following the puck and maybe he was on the opposite end of the ice, it had to be something. But the announcers didn't see anything. Him skating off the ice weird. Uh, he finished the period and he just didn't come out. And and that is so concerning because you don't know what it was. So you could, you could go either way with that injury. You could go in, in the way of, wow, like he didn't come out. Something really must be wrong. Or it could be, wow, he maybe just tweaked a little something and just can't go for a period and he'll be back in a couple days. But I know this, like Nathan McKinnon is a gamer. And if he could have went – he would have. And I am willing to bet he was pleading with doctors saying, let me get back out there. Just my guess. I don't know if that's true, but uh, you know, he, he, he will be out there at all costs. So like I said, I think avalanche fans are breathing a sigh of relief knowing that he won't be out for too long. Hopefully again, we don't have official word on that. And that's just going off what some insiders are saying. But even saying that, you know, he might not be out for a long time. The way that this season is and the way that the Avs schedule set up for a while, which is game day off, game day off, game day off. 
even if he's out for a week, he might have he might have missed you know a, a handful of games, maybe four or five games. Who knows? Where in the past maybe it was only like two or three. So it could still be something significant in terms of how many games he misses. The amount of time he misses might be short, but the games he miss he misses might be a little bit more than if it was a regular season. So we will wait. We will see. We will hold our breath. We'll cross our fingers. Whatever superstitions you have, uh, enable them. And hopefully that will help get Nathan McKinnon back on, on the ice quicker and sooner rather than later. Healthy, of course. We don't even we don't want a, a 50% Nathan McKinnon because that will just prolong injuries. And if it really is something serious that's lingering and he gets out there before he should, it flares back up again. Uh, but I just want to know what it was. Just own peace of mind. Uh, maybe just, you know, being – in this, you know, uh, media world, just want to know so we can talk about it. The other one, and this is good. Like we are, we're also used to bad news when it comes to the Colorado avalanche and, and injuries. So the other one, aside from Nathan McKinnon was Devon Taves and his, uh, again, was one that could have gone either way, could have gone the way of, uh, you saw it happen. It went off of his, the, his, foot or ankle and so you you knew exactly what his injury was and again could have been one of those things where depending on where exactly it hit could be out for a long uh, extended period of time or could be got a bruise just got to work through it and he'll be okay seems like it's more towards the he'll be okay in a shorter amount of time and the word is he might be out another seven to ten days so again that's good because it's not uh, weeks or months, but it's you know seven to ten days. But again, the way that the season's constructed, you're adding probably about three more games than he would have missed if this was any other season and any other schedule. So it's good and it's the good and the bad. You're getting him back earlier. He's missing a few more games because of the way the season's constructed. But I think in the end, uh, getting him back earlier rather than, you know, another injury that goes off into perpetuity, it seems like, is a good thing. So both good news on two players that are important to the team. Everybody's important to the team. Uh, but obviously Nathan McKinnon is Nathan McKinnon. And the way Taves has been playing has been perfect for this team. So good news potentially on two guys. So let's hope for that. So a lot of people still, and I mentioned this yesterday, a lot of people are wondering about conditioning and are these injuries related to conditioning? And it, if you look at these injuries, they're injuries that you, there's just nothing that you can do about them. Uh, with the ones that we know, you know, you know about Taves. That's just, he's in the line of the puck. There's, that's got nothing to do with conditioning. Calvert, really nothing to do with conditioning. It's lingering effects from concussions. Belmar ran into a guy on a hockey play. It seemed like it was knee on knee, and that has nothing to do with conditioning. Francois, we don't know why he's out, so we can't speculate as, as to what his injury is. And the same thing with Nathan McKinnon. Uh, until we know specifically what those injuries are, but I'm going to tell you right now, Nathan McKinnon's is is not because of conditioning. I don't want to hear that because he is one, you know, one of the most in shape players in the league. So that has nothing to do with conditioning. So the only one that's left out really is Francois. So if his is because of conditioning, that's one guy out of all the injuries that we have that's because of some form of conditioning or lack thereof. And I'll take those odds, and I'm willing to bet his isn't even conditioning related. All these injuries are just freakish things because that's hockey. You're just in the wrong place at the right t wrong time. You're in the line of a, a slap shot. The way the game is played now when everybody's blocking pucks left and right, I'm amazed that there's not more injuries than the ones that there already are in the league. So <laughs> injuries in the avalanche are almost synonymous right now. 
and uh, to get some good news, hopefully, uh, on a couple guys is uh, is a change. And it's, you know, it, it kind of almost brings a smile to your face. It's like, hey, everything's not always doom and gloom when it comes to the avalanche and injuries. But we still have to wait and see because we don't have official word from the team. We should get that tomorrow. Uh, and hopefully these guys are back on the ice and for the rest of the season. Hopefully once all these guys come back, we never have another injury for the rest of the season. Yeah, good luck with that. That'd be nice though. So, all right. So let's hear from our friends over at rockauto.com. And then we will take a, a quick little break and talk about Kale McCarr because why not? Kale, talking about Kale McCarr is fun. But right now we're going to talk about Rock Auto and rockauto.com. And rockauto.com is a family-run business. It has been serving auto parts customers online for 20 years. Go to rockauto.com to shop for auto and body parts from hundreds of manufacturers. They have everything from engine control modules and brake pads, excuse me, brake parts to tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet, whether it's for your classic or daily driver. Get everything you need in a few easy clicks delivered directly to your door. The rockauto.com catalog is unique and remarkably easy to navigate. Quickly see all the parts available for your vehicle and choose the brands, specifications, and prices that you prefer. Best of all, prices at rockauto.com are always reliably low, and the same for professionals and do-it-yourselfers, so why spend up to twice as much for the same parts? Go to rockauto.com right now. See the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in the how did you hear about us section so they know that we sent you to them. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. That is rockauto.com. All right, so Kale McCarr, you know him, you love him. Uh, he is always in the conversation now that his rookie season's out of the way and he has secured the Calder, which will never get taken away from him, despite what Vancouver Canuck fans hope and wish. Uh, so we moved on from that. And defenders, I feel like whenever you're going into a season and people are talking about making their predictions for you know the upcoming season and who's going to win this award, who's going to win that award, and it's always defenders – you know, you only hear about defenders when it comes to the Norris. That's their award. And that's pretty much where it stops. Every once in a blue moon, you'll hear a defender up for some other award. And I think that tide, hopefully, is turning a little bit. The, the amount of young, energetic, offensive-minded defensemen that are in the league are rising and that's the way that the game is being played now and that's what teams are looking for they're not just looking for you know some oafs on the blue line who can just you know throw a, a hit and knock a puck loose they want athletic uh fast offensive minded defensemen and camel car fits that mold to a t so I feel like, whoa, I just went down to my chair. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> um, I feel like the tide is turning in that. And I think it starts with him where you start to see defensemen starting to get noticed in, in other aspects when it comes to awards, namely the Hart Trophy. And is it time to start throwing – Kale McCarr into that discussion of a Hart Trophy candidate. You know, look, you're, you're always going to have Connor McDavid there. You're always going to have Dreisaitl there. You're always going to have McKinnon in there. You're always going to have Panarin in there. You're, you're always going to have, you know, Ovechkin's not done. All of those, you know, guys that are always at the top of the stat sheet year in and year out, they will always, always be there. And you don't get a lot of defenders in there, I think, up until now. And I think this is the start of maybe a shift when it comes to that. And I think it might start with Kale McCarr. Uh, you can't deny when he is out there, he is one of – I mean, when you play on a, on a team with Nathan McKinnon, uh, you might not ever really be able to say, like, you are the best on the ice because he's out there. Uh, but he is, you know, if you exclude him, 
he is probably the best skater on the ice. So if Nathan McKinnon is out for a little while, even if it's three games, uh, this is an opportunity for Cam McCarr to kind of take the reins and take the lead of this team. Even though Gabe Landis is our captain, and he he's you know our we all love him, but in terms of on the ice and controlling the game, Gabe Landis really doesn't do that. Nathan McKinnon does that, and Kale McCarr can do that. So let's just, you know, for example, say that Nathan McKinnon is out for three games. And how Kale McCarr plays in those three games, I think people will take notice and maybe throw some votes his way when it comes to be being a heart voting time. Now, you could argue that does, you know, Kale McCarr – being uh, noticed for the Hart Trophy, take votes away from Nathan McKinnon, and that very well could be true. But um, I'm just talking about getting noticed. Uh, I think as far as the Norris Trophy goes, uh, you know, Kel McCarr is absolutely in that conversation, without a doubt. And if he keeps playing the way he's playing, you would think he would finish very high up, top three, most likely, uh, with a very, very good chance to win it. Should that exclude him from winning the Hart Trophy? Not at all. And I, I got his stats up here. I think he's, what's he, 11, were we 11 games in, 10 games in? Uh, he And he just scored his first goal against Minnesota. So that was his first goal against 10 assists, which is 11 points, uh, which is right up there with the top. I want to say, what's Nathan McKinnon at? Nathan McKinnon is at like 14 points, which I think – I'm going to look his up real quick. Um, which I, th- I think Nathan McKinnon is, is tops in the division anyway. If he's not, he, he just lost it the other day. So McKinnon is at 14 points. Yeah, two and two goals and 12 assists for, for McKinnon. So he's three points behind, and he's a defender. And that's where I'm saying. That's where this, this league is going is in in the the realm of an offensive defender. So will they start getting more looks? I definitely think so. And I think it like I said, I think it starts with Kale McCarr. I think at the end of the year he he is going to be Norris no doubt top 2 or 3, excellent chance to win it. And when it comes to the heart, he could be top 5 and he will get some votes. I can almost guarantee you. He might get some first, second and third place votes. Um will he win it? I think, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say he should win it. I think it might be a long shot for him to win it. But I think he will get some recognition, which will only start that train of and next year they get more looks. And you have Bowen Byram, who's right behind him, who is off to a phenomenal start. Not so much in the, the stats category, but just how he is playing. And those points and stuff for him will come. So you have guys like him, you know, you have – uh, you know, Quinn Hughes, who are, is, is always going to be compared to McCarr, he'll be in on it because he's up there in points again this year. I think it just that the tide is turning and just, hand, you know, how we just hand the MVP in football to a quarterback. Just to, it doesn't matter what else, anybody else does, it goes to a quarterback. So I think uh, this could be the beginning of a new trend in giving defenders a little bit more love when it comes to MVP. And, uh, like everything else is doing right now, starts with Kale McCarr because uh, he's good. He's real good. So, all right, uh, we are going to take another quick little break. I also want to talk to you guys about our newest show. I don't know if you've uh, heard about it yet, but it's called Locked On Today. And Locked On Today is our daily podcast, like all our podcasts here are, which covers all of sports. It's not just focused in on one sport. It's it, you, you get all the sports news you need from the previous day all in one Locked On show. It's called Locked On Today. Peter Bukowski hosts it, who also hosts our Locked On Packers show. So with the Packers no longer playing, he's got some extra time on his hands. So he's hosting our Locked On Today. So it's a daily podcast breaking down the biggest stories with analysts from our local experts. So when the Avalanche win the Stanley Cup, I will be on that show, I'm assuming. 
Uh, so all the sports you need across all the major sports in under 20 minutes. So su- subscribe to Locked On Today, wherever you get your podcast. It's an excellent, well-produced show. Uh, also going to hear from our friends over at betonline.ag. And speaking of football, you know there's a game coming up this Sunday, so I've heard two teams play and they're on a field and they go head to head. Yeah, it's called the Super Bowl. And if you want to bet it, which I've heard that other people do that, you can go to betonline.ag, sign up today for your free accounts and use the promo code locked on bet online will add 50% to your first deposit. So yeah, so it's a, a big week to do that. If you have not signed up for them yet and you want to put some money down on the Super Bowl. Like I said, go to betonline.ag and don't sit on the sidelines anymore. Get in on the action. Use that promo code locked on for the 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Bet online, your sports book experts. All right, one more piece of business to get to, and that is our three stars of the week from last week, not named Nathan. And like I said in the beginning of the show, we or I like to, I don't just look at the stats and just hand it to the guys who had the best stats. I kind of like to, you know, after watching the game and how things were played, how things materialized, give it to guys that uh, aren't necessarily at the top of the stat sheet. That's just too easy. That's why I call it three stars of the week, not named Nathan, because it's just too easy to give it to him each and every week. For example, I was really, really close to putting Tyson Jost as a third star, because I just think he's playing well. I, I think he, he's he's his defense on uh, penalty kills is phenomenal right now. So it's stuff like that that I'm that I'm looking for. But what I wanted to do for this week was really honor the second line because they had a tough go of it in the beginning, <clears throat> and <clears throat> excuse me, and they really turned it around. Uh, last week. So going through the, the week's games, uh, you know, Andre Burkowski, Nazem Kadri, Brandon Saad. Those are my guys for this week. And uh, for, for Burkowski, I think he's my third star. Um, and going through the games, the game against Anaheim, when they lost three to one, none of these guys did anything. And nobody really did anything at all, with the exception of Nathan McKinnon getting an assist to Miko Rantanen. That that game is just you can throw that one away. It was it was just a a incredible performance by Gibson. So that's kind of like a throwaway game. After that, the game against the Sharks, the first game against the Sharks, Burakovsky with two assists, Kadri with one assist, Brandon Saad with two goals. And Brandon Saad's been a little bit of a whipping boy to start the season. Because he's gotten off to a slow start, and that that's no secret. It's no, you know, I, I think it took him a little while just to get comfortable. But he, last week he definitely did, and it started with those two goals. The next game against San Jose when they won three to nothing, Burkowski with a goal, Saad with two assists, and Nazem Kadri with his best game of the season: ten shots on goal, two goals, and one assist. Fast forward to the first game against Minnesota when they win 5-1. to one. Burkowski with two assists. Kadri with nothing. He was held off the stat sheet. And Brandon Saad with one goal and one assist. And then the 4-3 to three loss in overtime. Burkowski was held off the stat sheet. Kadri with an assist. And Saad with a goal. So... They they have really really stepped it up. Just how I said, you know, last week's number one star was Phil Grubauer because he had held them into games, and I could have easily put him on there again this week, but I felt like as a, a team, I feel like the the second star or the second unit and the second line as a whole deserved to be noticed. So my third star goes to Andre Burkowski. My second star goes to Nazem Kadri. And my first star goes to Brandon Saad. Uh, And all three of those guys played well. Now, what gets interesting is with Nathan McKinnon possibly being out, Burkowski might be bumped up to that first line for this week, kind of breaks up that second line, which has been playing very, very well. And that's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see, like, I understand why Jared Bednar is moving guys up and down, but 
I was thinking if he kept guys together and worked through the issues, uh, they would they would be okay. And he dropped Kadri down into that third line, kind of like a wake up call to him. The very next game, brought him right back up, and they were off to the races. So now you're breaking that up a little bit. And now who? I think Burkowski will be fine if he comes up to the third line. But do you keep that second line together because they're playing well and bring somebody else up? You're skipping them to the second line and bring them up to the first line? <clears throat> or do you bring Burkowski up to the first line? And then, you know, it's like domino effect. You're bringing somebody else up to the second line and someone else to the third line. I don't know. <clears throat> we we shall see. And if whatever Bednar decides to do isn't working, you know he'll change it. Mid-game, too. So... Uh, what do you guys think? What's your what's your stars of the week? Let me know, LockedOnAvalanche at gmail.com, or let me know on Twitter, LLPN underscore Avalanche. And that will be it for this week, or this, yeah, this week. No, we got a long week to go. That'll be it for today. So, uh, yeah, get a hold of me if you guys want to chat some hockey. And thank you for tuning in each and every day. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, we will see you guys tomorrow. If there's any news that comes out of uh, the avalanche camp about any injuries, you know, it seems like Taves and, and McKinnon, we might get some news on them a little bit earlier than the other guys. I uh, will definitely talk about it tomorrow. So that's going to be it. 